Good morning, sunshine. Thanks for joining us for this episode. This is a show that is truly focused on behavioral health. I'm one of your hosts today, Brandon Lee, alongside my very good friend and colleague, Carrie Pena. We want to thank all of you for being with us here on our YouTube channel and following along with all of our social media as well. We're starting off with what's going down in this term California sober, I guess coined by Demi Lovato. That's right, and, and it really was so controversial when she came out with that term because a lot of people in the recovery field and a lot of people who are sober within 12-step programs, they said, you can't be sober if you're still using a substance. Well, what and does California sober mean? It means harm reduction. I mean, it's meeting people where they're at. You know, I think if we coin it instead of California sober, we talk about harm reduction. It's essentially saying that you no longer are gonna use the drugs that brought you to your rock bottom. Mm -hmm. But you, it, let's say it's meth or heroin or even marijuana. If that was a drug that took you down, they believe that you can still go out and have a drink or two um, you know, during the week. Um, so you're not necessarily technically sober, which is why there's been a lot of backlash towards the phrase California sober. Us in the field of addiction, we look at it more as harm reduction. And Demi Lovato, they have been very open about their own struggles. Yep. And, and talking very publicly to their millions of followers. And, and they are hugely influential, which is why a lot of people said, listen, you have a huge platform. There's a lot of young people who listen and follow to every word you say. We gotta be responsible in the language that we're using. So I really hope that Demi Lovato and Miley Cyrus understand the impacts of harm reduction, but also everything that encompasses it because they have a huge platform. You also have that responsibility. We're gonna continue our conversation now about addiction and sobriety yeah. and recovery. We wanna welcome Hamilton Baden into the uh, studio with us. He is the CEO of U-Turn you. Health. You know, I wanna just uh, tell our audience, I mean, this show is all about brutal honesty. We're trying to bring segments that can help people whatever touches yep. them to advance their lives. And I actually caught a Facebook uh, post, your beautiful wife made this Facebook post about the fact that you had been sober for how many years? 10 years. 10 years, and she was just talking about how proud she is of you. And, yeah. and so I'm, I reached out to say, why don't you come in and tell a little bit about your sobriety journey and what you're doing today. Yeah, happy to do it. Um, you know, a lot of people are very quiet about their journey. I am. Uh, anything but quiet, which is why I don't have a voice anymore. <laughs> um, you know, I struggled many years with behavioral health. As a kid, I was diagnosed with ADD, hyperactivity, which you'll figure out very quickly because I have a lot of energy. And as I grew up through the ranks in healthcare, stress, anxiety, the whole nine yards. And 10 years ago, I woke up one morning, my wife looked at me and she said, I'm done. She goes, I love you, but I'm not in love with you anymore. And immediately I go, I'll quit. That was the biggest lie in the world. I, the, immediately in my head was like, all right, how the hell can I get myself out of this? How can I manipulate my way out? And I called a good buddy of mine who had um, gone to treatment and he looked at me and he said, you gotta get on a plane tonight. And that's what I did. I flew across the country, went to treatment, never touched another drink again. But um, what I've learned through this journey is that's not the only way. Um, recovery is an individual thing. It's It's, you know, Brandon kind of talked about it. For 70 years, we've kind of dictated to people, this is what recovery looks like. And in my opinion, that's why only 10% of people get help. Yeah, before we go into, yeah. I want to, we want to hear about your company and everything, but I'm yeah. just curious when you, when you got to that breaking point, because yep. a lot of people I think try to gauge, you know, how, how bad is it getting? You know, and there's a lot of ways you can convince yourself that, hey, this is manageable. I'm yep. a successful guy. Yep. I run a company. You know, I've got all, I'm checking all these boxes. So just for folks who are watching and listening, can you kind of describe like what were your daily habits and how, when you just say you were getting out of control, what do you mean by that? Well, it's interesting because everything that you just said, I went through. I'll throw one out to people that um, you'll find very interesting. I kept a spreadsheet on how much I was allowed to drink. A normal drinker doesn't have to keep a spreadsheet. <laughs> That's pretty much an obvious sign right there, but I went through everything, yeah. I mean, <laughs> And the other thing you have to understand is all people that struggle are different. I had a buddy that got up every morning, he dropped his kids off and he went straight to Circle K and got a bottle of uh, Crown Royal, drank it all day long. I was not one of those. I went to work every day, I showed up everywhere I was supposed to go, I was very successful. When I came home at night, um, we would open up a bottle of wine and I just would not stop. It didn't matter, would not stop. And then once a week, once every two weeks, I would just go off the chain. You were a binge. Yeah. I was a binge drinker, but I went through it. I mean, I went through all of those things. And I always say, if I had woken up that morning and my wife had handed me four Advil and say, I love you, honey, I'm sorry you have a headache. I wouldn't have gone to treatment. No way in hell would have I gone to treatment. 
it's, it's a journey, and sometimes it takes certain things to get people there, um, but we think there's a different way. We don't think everyone has to hit bottom like I did and then go away to treatment for six weeks. Mm. Agreed, and I think we need to start looking at addiction and recovery as not black and white, right? And that there's 100%. not one program that we can apply to everybody who has substance use disorder issues. That's exactly and right. the reason being that if it is a disease, and I'll be a believer of that, fine, but there's a spectrum to every disease, just like there's a spectrum to autism, right? Even in the books of the 12-step program, yep. they say some are sicker than others. So even back in the 30s, they realized that there is a spectrum even then. And if somebody is a 10 on an extreme level, you can't take that same program and apply it to somebody who's at a two or a three. No. And I think that finally we're getting to this point that we're understanding that um, addiction is not a moral failing, it is not at all, it is trauma-based. So Hamilton, can you tell us about U-Turn Health and what you're doing there? Yeah, and I talked to Brandon a little bit earlier about this. U-Turn Health is a very different look at this. In order to explain U-Turn Health, you gotta understand some of the statistics. SAMHSA, that's the governing body of substance use uh, disorder in this country, says about 46% of Americans either struggle or have a loved one. And the loved one is really important to us. What most people don't realize is 26% of American workers claim they go home to addiction. So these are people that aren't struggling themselves, but they're going home to a parent, a spouse, or a child that struggles. So we have this huge group of people that are struggling. What percentage of people get help? Brandon knows, 10%. 10% raise their hand, walk down the hall to HR and go, I have a problem, I need help. We're not helping the bigger group. We need to get to the 90%. Long story short, U-Turn Health was built to get to those 90%, get them started in a harm reduction manner. Bottom line is we treat people as human beings first. If we treat you as a human and we get you engaged and we take as much responsibility for getting you better as you take yourself, we will get you better. So we have a learning management system called U-Turn. The best way to think of it is Netflix for behavioral health. It's over 450 videos. Um, it's actually the largest collection of counselor-led videos in the country on behavioral health. Really feel good. We don't use words like alcoholic and addicts. It's very much to drive people there to learn, to get educated, to get hope and advice from the stories of others. What people don't realize is 46% of people that struggle with substance misuse which is the beginning stages, they correct on their own. Mm -hmm. When they get educated and they start to learn and get hope and advice, they change their behavior. They don't have to hit bottom. So that really gets people started. And then we have an evidence-based peer coaching program. And what we believe is you need to take someone with lived experience, whether it's Brandon, whether it's me, whether it's a family member, and they need to take as much responsibility as you to move you forward in this journey. And I just have to ask you, just uh, as we wrap yeah. things up, what surprised you most on your journey? That I didn't become this stick in the mud loser like I thought all alcoholics were. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hate to say that, but like that was the stigma. I went to AA meetings before I got sober, and I'm like, these people are nothing like me. I hate this. I'm not an alcoholic. And I'll tell you what surprised my wife more than anything. The, the challenge for us is when I tried not to drink. That's when I was miserable. So she expected me to come home from rehab, this miserable, angry person. And I came home just as crazy, just as obnoxious, just as vivacious as I was. And my life is a million times better than it ever was, without question. And my marriage is a million times better than it ever was. We appreciate you being here today. Oh my Flying God, in I'm... for the segment. I know you're on baby watch, so we Sorry, appreciate, appreciate you being it. here. Thank you. Uh, really important information. Well, more importantly, thank you guys for talking about this. It's Always. A, it's, a we'll big, it's a big deal, and people need to hear it. So thank you. Yeah, that's why we're doing the show. So Love it. thank you, Hamilton. Thank you. Uh, you know, Hamilton talked about turning pain into purpose, and, and that's what our next segment is all about as well. Uh, I am working on a storytelling series with Gateway for Cancer Research, and I had uh, the pleasure, the honor, really, to interview an incredible person named Delora. She is their chief program officer. She lost her brother at age 19, mm -hmm. but she decided that she was going to do something about it. And she talked to me about what it means to work on this mission to find truly find cures for cancer. My younger brother was 19 years old when we found out that he had a very rare bone cancer. 
We searched near and far for options as his odds were not great. Um, we lost him and um, since then I have made it my passion, um, really finding purpose for our pain and hoping that never happens to another family. I'm Dolores Seneff, the Chief Program Officer at Gateway for Cancer Research. One of the most beautiful gifts I've ever received um, was from my brother Nate. He was sick, um, he got sick right before my wedding. So fast forward three short months later, um, my brother had a blood transfusion and a few other things um, to allow him to feel well enough to be there. And during the wedding, I hear them page my name and my husband's name and we go to the dance floor. Uh, there was my brother and my sister who performed a beautiful duet that they had been practicing. My brother was determined with my sister um, to play um, Indian Moon, which is a song that my brother played every time um, prior to chemo that gave him strength and he wanted to play that for me and looking back I think he knew that um, he probably wouldn't be here much longer and left me with that so that I could feel his strength the rest of my life until we meet again. The day after I lost my brother, I found I was pregnant with my oldest son. So I truly believe he sent me my angel, um, who's named after him. And one of the last things he said to me um, in hospice, when he could still talk, was, Dee, promise me that you will help other families not go through this. Um, so I get up every day with purpose. This isn't a job for me. Um, the passion that I have to help others not go through the pain and the suffering that cancer patients and their families endure is truly my life's mission. Our chairman has this phrase, it is always and only about the patient. And he truly means that. I have seen this man help everyone of every different walk of life no matter what they looked like or where they came from, he is so passionate about helping others. And that light that he has ignited in him is so contagious. And I truly believe watching that is what made me want to work um, for the charity that he created because he's not giving up. Gateway for Cancer Research is a vehicle of hope, um, a global reach where we are going out and finding the most promising trials for cancer patients to ultimately amend standard of care. And we, reach, we are reaching near and far to find those trials and to fund them at the bedside of patients today. Not a day goes by that I don't think about my little brother, um, Nathan. He um, was my best friend. And my two kids ask about him most days, and I tell them that Uncle Nate is in heaven and the best guardian angel. Going forward, I continue to fight for my brother Nate and all other cancer warriors out there. And again, this isn't just a job for me. I am on a mission uh, to help others not endure the suffering that we have unfortunately endured. And this is a year-long series that you are doing with Gateway Cancer Research to help change lives. Yes, we're bringing attention to the research, um, the researchers. So I'm flying all over the country, interviewing the researchers, talking about the success and clinical trials that a lot of the public doesn't even know about, that these clinical trials are available. And Delora is one of the key people. I mean, she's just, she's one of those people that you meet her. She's so amazing. And I think there's so many people out there just desperate enough 
to even want to do the clinical trials if they know about yes. the clinical trials. Yes, and if, if you're told you have stage four cancer, sorry, there's nothing more that we can do. No, Gateway for up. Cancer Research is like, that's not good enough. Right. That is not good enough. So it's really been an honor to do that program. All right. I'm really excited for this next guest, this next segment, Mind, Body, and Spirit. Our guest today is Andrea Barkley. She's a fitness and nutrition coach, mindful living advocate. She's also the author, and I love the title of this book, <laughs> Moan Out Loud Protein Shakes. Oh, yeah. We have a sequel because it's Moan Out Loud and Louder That's right. Protein Shakes. All right. <laughs> Thank you for being here, first off. And My here's, pleasure. I'm really just kind of even excited because I hope to learn something from this because, you know, we live in this we live in this uh, convenience world where we just need to grab something and go. Yes. There are so many friggin' protein shakes out there on the market. There's ones you can pick up at the 7-Eleven and a Shell gas station. Oof. And Right? <laughs> and then you can go, like, I do the whole pea plant protein shake okay. that I get, you know, from my powders at Whole Foods or whatever. Tell us, what are some things that we can take home at? Because we all drink protein shakes, mm -hmm. right? We're always yeah. on the go. Everybody's drinking them these days. What are some things we need to be on the lookout for? Number one, I believe that you eat with your eyes first. And so I think that protein shakes can be such a beautiful addition to anything that you do. And I actually like to use protein shakes to treat a sweet tooth. So I don't know about you guys, but when I'm done with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I have a sweet tooth. And most people, <laughs> yeah, most people really struggle with sugar and sweets and baked goods. But I found that if you swap one of those things for an incredible protein shake, you put it in a wine glass, you feel like you're doing something decadent, you <laughs> add some whole foods to it, then it really is such a treat. And I, I wrote the book because I was so disillusioned by the ingredients that were in a lot of protein um, shakes and powders, and I wanted it to be an opportunity to treat my body to whole foods. And there are really now such incredible powders on the market, so I'm with you in that whole foods scoop up, I'm all into it. But you really can make shakes that are so good that when you take a sip, you moan out loud. And that's what inspired the name, is that no recipe <laughs> made it in the book unless I went, oh my God, that's so good. Maybe I need so you to be good. making me a protein <laughs> shake. I mean, I ain't moaning so at all with good. my peanut butter and banana protein Yeah, shakes. I mean, and you really are what you eat. So when you eat the, and drink these beautiful things, you feel so good. And then how incredible to not have that big sugar bomb you know, hit to your bloodstream and instead have something that's more balanced, that stabilizes your blood sugar, keeps you feeling good and looking good. Most people struggle with getting enough protein in their diet, so it's a great way to do it. So you have this thing too where you're texting people every morning. I do. Talk to me about this and how do we sign up for this? Yes, so when I was first starting out into fitness, I hired my own personal trainer to get me out of this love fat bubble, right? And he really changed my life. And one of the ways that he changed my life, this was way before texting, is he would call me in the morning and say, Andrea, wake that up time to go hit the track, this is what I want you to eat today. Because if I'm only seeing a trainer three days a week, there's a lot of time to fail in the rest of the week, right? right? That's, if you're having a 30 to 45 minute workout with a trainer, there's a lot of downtime. So his touch points with me throughout the week were really helpful to help keep me on track. So I created a program called The Daily Motivator, and all you have to do is go to andreabarkley.com slash motivate, you sign up and I send you a text every weekday morning and I say, good morning, Brandon. Good morning, Carrie. Time to rise and shine, and here's what I want you to do. And it's a little text of accountability, exact homework as it relates to food and fitness, and it just helps to know that someone is encouraging you and rooting for you. And so we've had a lot of success, that. and it's a lot of fun. I like, how early does that text come? <laughs> <laughs> it's usually in Before the 5, 5 a.m.? Well, you put your, your phone, phone on silent, so you don't have to have yeah, it. You could, yeah, you turn your phone off at night? I leave it on. Why? Oh, do not disturb, my friend. Yeah, do not, do disturb. not disturb. Get because you no. know. I'm always afraid. No, 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 what if it's no, no, no. emergency and someone that, needs that, to reach me? They have 911. No, there's nothing you can do at 3 o'clock in the morning for that emergency that you can't do at 7 o'clock when you get a full eight hours of sleep. That's that's the, 911 the, if it's an emergency. I guess that's the caretaker in me. That's a separate trauma <laughs> therapy yeah. session. You need to take care of yourself. <laughs> that's so you it. You took the words out of my mouth. Okay, fair point. Fair point. Before we go, can you just give people who are watching and listening, and people are in different places, right? Yes. That's why we wanted this show. Some of it is maybe I just want to get healthier. Some of it is I have so much anxiety. Some of it is deeper level depression. Some yes. of it is addiction. Where do people start? You know, if someone's watching you and they're like, hey, I, I like what she's saying, yeah. but how do I get started on this? Just If you're starting from scratch, I say just start walking. Just start walking. And, you know, I, I'm a big believer in therapy and counseling. And I had a counselor once say to me, even while I was a personal trainer, 
um, Andrea, just, I couldn't like bring myself to go exercise and work out. And she said, Andrea, I just want you to go walk on the treadmill for 30 minutes a day. Just go walk. And for me, preferably if it's outside, go walk for 30 minutes a day. If you're at a gym, that's awesome because you might spy the weights over there and say, okay, I'll lift a couple of those. So just commit to one thing. I also think that the best exercise that you should do, or the exercise that you should do is the one that you will do. So what sounds good to you, that's what you should do. What yeah. will you do? That's what you should do. And let's take this opportunity now, since you're watching us here on YouTube, go down to the comment section yeah. and tell us what you are doing right now in your day, whether it's exercise or whether it's food, what are you doing healthy in your life? And maybe when others are reading the comments, you may inspire somebody else to yeah. do that. Lastly, before we go, you have a podcast. I do. What's the name of it? I do. I have a it? podcast originally titled The Andrea Barkley Show, <laughs> where, <laughs> where we talk about fitness, food, and parenting, and all of those things that help you feel better and live a healthier life. It. Thank you so much. Wow. It is so it, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And it was it's, fun. I, I'm going to have to try one of your smoothies. Oh, Something for sure. I'll like send you a book. <laughs> okay. I mean, easy with the moment. Yeah. I know. You better moan. <laughs> Thank you so much, Andrew. Jeez, <laughs> Lord. <please>. Thank you. <laughs> now to our sunshine story. And this is so cute. Little wishes. Adorable. We're in love with this little guy. So we all know about, you know, Make-A-Wish Foundation. Yeah. And, and, you know, sadly, those are for kids who are terminal. Um, and so they do these grand, huge wishes. You know, they go to Disney World, giving those kids one last thing to smile about. Um, this, is, this is really like little wishes. So these are kids who are not terminal, but... Uh, the boy that we're showing you in this clip, um, he has spent half of his childhood in a hospital battling, I believe, leukemia. Yeah, so 45 rounds of chemo, 23 blood transfusions, uh, 865 days of fighting leukemia, and now is officially cancer free. He is cancer free, and you can see the joy and the smiles on his face, and you can see everyone around him, they're like in tears, and they're, they're celebrating this. They're not like, hey, you know, you're discharged. No, there's a huge celebration. And, and, and if that isn't inspiring enough to see this little boy who has spent half of his life in the hospital smiling and laughing, like if you're having a bad day, just remember this little boy right here who yeah. has gone through hell and back and he is smiling at the end of it. And, and all of the nurses and the frontline workers who are doing an incredible job by just showing empathy and love. And for them, how beautiful it must feel to see someone recover. Absolutely. Because they go through so much trauma themselves. Witnessing. Witnessing, you know, so especially sick. the horror of childhood cancer. So glad to bring you that sunshine story. And thanks to all of you so much for following along on our journey here on Good Morning Sunshine. And while we have you here on our YouTube channel, go ahead, subscribe to it. You'll notice there's a little alarm notification bell. Click on that. When you do that, you will be sent an alert every time we upload a new episode right here on our Good Morning Sunshine channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We'll see you back here for the next episode. Take good care, everyone.